So guys, uh, I've been talking to you about how our recent motivation monies have been building to a story, a story that I want to share with you. And I talked to you guys a few weeks ago about how when you set your goals, when you dream of the life that you want to have someday, that you're going to go through some adversity, you're going to go through some hardships, it is not going to come to you easy. And that through the adversity, it's going to take some time. And you're going to have to put some trust in God that God's timing is always perfect. And though God's timing may not be our timing, though God's timing may take longer than what we want, ultimately God's timing is always perfect. And it will be worth the wait in the end. And so ultimately, as you are on the path to the life of your dreams, as you are working to achieve your life's greatest goals, don't worry too much. Don't sweat the small stuff. You handle what you can handle. You do what you can do. And ultimately, God will take care of the rest. And so what I want you guys to do right now, uh, even if you didn't finish the writing prompts for today, I want you to go ahead and close your Chromebook. And I want to tell you guys a story. And I want you to know that I would never ask you guys to do anything that I don't ask of myself. When I ask you guys to set goals, to work hard, to put your trust in God, I expect the same of myself. Mr. Mercurial has life goals as well. When I was younger, my goal was to graduate from Penn State University, and I was able to accomplish that goal. After I graduated, my next goal, I wanted to become a teacher. I wanted to become a teacher here at Bishop McDevitt, and it took some time. There were years of having to substitute teach and bounce around to different schools before finally I got my foot in the door here at Bishop McDevitt. After I got my job at McDevitt, I wanted to buy my own house. I wanted to move out of my parents' house. And so I worked my butt off teaching, coaching, used to manage a pool to save up the money that I could put a big down payment on my house. I talk about my house all the time. You guys know I live in Pakistan. You got to see my house a little bit when I showed you all the Halloween decorations. And ultimately, the goal that I've been working towards most notably, not just in recent years, but over the last 15, 20 years of my life. I've always known that I wanted to get married, that I, I want to get married, I want to marry the right girl, and I want to start a family with that person. And that's something that I've really struggled with through the years. I've been very fortunate, very lucky to meet a lot of different people, date different people, but just never the right one. It just never felt right. No matter how hard I tried or wanted it to work, I always knew deep down this isn't right, this isn't meant to be. And sometimes I would get frustrated. I would say, God, you know, come on. You know I want to get married. You know I want to start a family. Like, where is she? When am I going to meet this girl? I needed to trust that in God's perfect timing, everything would work out exactly as it should. God heard my prayers. God put that calling in my heart that I would want to get married and have a family someday. Now I needed to be patient and trust him to take care of the rest. And I'll never forget the date was December 31st, 2015. It was New Year's Eve. I was out with a group of friends. And a friend of mine reached out and said, hey, you know, if you're going to be out tonight, um, you know, let me know where you're at. And, and maybe, you know, my friends and your friends, we can all meet up. I was like, yeah, definitely. Just let me know. And so she reaches out and I tell her, you know, where I'm at. And I see her from across the way. Um, you know, I say, hey, and I give her a hug. And I'll never forget, she turns and she goes, Jim, I want you to meet my best friend. This is so-and-so. And my heart dropped. Like, I was like, oh. you know what I mean? Just like, who is this girl? I need to know everything about this girl. And throughout the course of that night, um, I mean, we, we talked, we joked. It was just so natural. You would have thought that we knew each other for years. Um, and I said to my friend, I said, hey, you know, what's, what's the deal with, you know, so-and-so? Hey, you know, I was thinking about asking her out. well... You know, I think she's seeing somebody else. Um, and then later down the road, my friend said, hey, guess what? You know, so-and-so, she's single. You should ask her. I said, well, I'm kind of seeing someone else. And we kind of did this back and forth, right? Where it's like, you know, maybe she was talking to somebody. Maybe I was talking to somebody. But eventually, we started to spend some time together. We started hanging out. Uh, and it was going really well for a time being. But ultimately, it actually didn't work out. We actually ended up going our separate ways. And for the first time in my life, I was really bummed about like a, a breakup, about something not working out. And it was very strange for me. Normally, you know, when a relationship doesn't work out, it's not meant to be. I move on with my life. It is what it is. It was the first time where I said, this just doesn't feel right. I feel like there was something more there. I feel like we're leaving something on the table. There's still more to this story. And sure enough, that friend that initially introduced us, 
She ended up having a daughter. Guess who she asked to be the godparents? Mr. Material and this other girl, yes? And so through her daughter, we were kind of brought back together. And through baptisms and birthday parties, it was sort of like, almost like God saying, hey, like I need to get these two back into each other's lives. And I'll never forget, you know, I knew when I started seeing her again at these different events that, you know, I would be a little nervous and, and a little excited to see her. And, you know, I knew that I still thought about her, um, but I wasn't sure how she felt. Uh, and I'll never forget um, at our goddaughter's baptism when I saw her for the first time in a while, I just, I knew. I was like, oh my God, like she still, she still thinks about it too. She still has some feelings. I know she does. And eventually um, we had the opportunity. So then COVID hits, right? And that creates a whole mess. But eventually as things started to calm down with COVID and it was clear that we were both kind of thinking about this thing, uh, we had the opportunity to start spending some time together to start, you know, dating one another. Um, and ultimately, you know, through this relationship, it became very clear to Mr. Makira, there is no doubt. This is the girl I am in love with. This is the girl that I want to spend my life with. And I know she feels it too. And so I'm very excited to announce to you guys that on Friday, Friday afternoon, oh after God. school, uh, I took this girl to Fort Hunter. And we got engaged to be married. Oh,